Good afternoon viewers, welcome to your favorite research network, Live Tips. This is Mohan to give more updates about equity market for the afternoon session. So today we saw some market in the early morning with a open with a negative bias and traded with a negative only for the day and till now. And we see saw uh, 6000 is nifty trading around 6000. We need to see whether it is hold or not. And even most of all the uh, banking sector, you are seeing some some bit of short covering. And when we are seeing some weakness was there in the uh, IT sector like Infosys, TCS, Wipro, HCL Technology are showing some some bit of weakness. And some bit of short covering was seeing in the banking sector like SBI Bank, Access Bank, ICIC Bank, and even IDFC. So we need to see an overall uh, market at the closing. Still, how it will be the uh, market closing? And but we are, we are seeing some selling pressure from the FIF strategy. FIF strategy has been seen yesterday also. Uh, there is some bit of pressure was there in the market. So everyone is to be cautious on the longer side. When who has to? We already recommended in a two days earlier. One has to buy a 6,200 put option for every cash long position. So they, one, one has to hold that uh, put option and carry forward to for further days also. Because market looking bit will hit up volatile. If it is closing below 6,000, then it might be a seen further weakness up to 5,880, 5, 5, 5, and uh, 5,7 levels also. It can test to uh, or, I mean, uh, previous uh, lows which we saw around support around 5.7 uh, on this on the current market. So that's all viewers. Uh, still we have commodity currency market to uh, discuss after the short commercial. Don't go away. Stay with us. Good afternoon viewers. Welcome back to your favorite research network Live Tips. We will have a quick update on what is happening in the currency market with Mr. Joy and later to the, the session we will have a discussion on commodities market with myself company. So welcome Mr. Joy. Thanks Ramit. So Mr. Joy, how is dollar trading in today's market? Well, the dollar rose two weeks against the yen before US report. Today, which may show employees added jobs for a third month, supporting demand for assets in the very largest economy. Okay. The dollar rose to 83.54 yen, mm -hmm. that's highest level since December 23rd. Okay. So we are expecting the US payroll data to come in afternoon section and that will then give the trend give the the okay. So what is the expectation about the payroll data today? Well, economists are basically focused on the number of jobs added by US employees in December. Mm -hmm. After a report this week showed that the biggest jump in company payroll since record began in 2001. Okay. The media focus in a Bloomberg News survey calls for 150,000 gains last month. Mm -hmm. So we are expecting a margin of 15,000 uh, increase, increase in the data. Right, right. The unemployment may have fallen to 9.7 percent in December from 9.8 percent in the previous month. Okay, so you're expecting the, a drop in unemployment. Yes, yeah. positive news. Positive news for that one. Uh, the dollar dropped 3.4 percent last year in a measure of the currencies of 10 developed nations, mm -hmm. according to a global correlation weighted currency indices. Mm -hmm. The greenback has risen to 0.3 percent since the end of 2010. Okay. So, in the last two, two weeks, we have seen a marginal hike in the dollar index. Okay, after this positive release from China. the US, how is euro trading today? Well, the euro had for a weekly loss base of 15 of its 16 major counterparts mm -hmm. on concerns that the European government will struggle to raise funds as the region's fiscal <coughs> sorry, crisis linkage. Losses in the euro were also led by expectation for good for goods US jobs died on Friday. Okay. The euro fetched 1.2987 from 1.3003. Mm -hmm. This is a three week low against the dollar mm -hmm. before idly watching and other European countries at that next week. Okay. Okay, so we are expecting the uh, market to take views from the US data, US data. and also, also uh, the public de uh, debt selling by the government of okay, the US. Okay, to get the market next week. The next week. Okay. So how is the Australian currency trading? Well, the Australian dollar was close to a two week low against the US counterparts as well as the Fed's impact South specific nations call industry. Okay. Australian currency is about 99.30 US cents from 99.44 cents yesterday mm -hmm. after declining to 99.20 cents. That's at least since December 21st. Okay. It was set for a 3 percent drop this week. Mm -hmm. The so called OZ was at 82.90 yen from 82.85 yen. Okay. So we have seen a margin decline against the yen as well. Okay. So, Mr. Joy, what is this impact of this Australian trend that is going on on the commodities market and also on the currency markets? Well, the Australia is the world's biggest coal export. When Sapphire so cocking coal to make steel and thermal coal to generate power are combined. Mm -hmm. The Queensland's coal exports may be cut by as much as 30 million metric tons if heavy rains and flooding continues across the state into February. 
लॉस इन शिपर में कॉस्ट आया फाइव बिलियन डॉलर तो इसमें इस मार्जिन लेंथी फॉर इकोनॉमी एस का ऑर्डर फॉर द ऑस्ट्रेलियन करेंसी अगेन यूएस डॉलर ओके दैट इज़ वाइज सीइंग द ऑस्ट्रेलियन करेंसी करेक्टिंग कॉस्ट कपड़ों का कपड़ों का ओके थैंक यू जॉय फॉर योर वैल्यूबल इंसाइट्स स्टेटमेंट व्यूअर्स वि� Welcome back, guys. We'll discuss the commodities market with Mr. Nani. Welcome, Mr. Nani. So, Mr. Nani, what's the trend going on in the bullion market today? Afternoon trade. Yeah. Spot call dropped for a fifth day, the longest losing streak since August 2009. As signs that U.S. economy is recovering resulted in U.S. dollar appreciating, eroding appeals of bullion as an alternative investment. So, we have seen some sell-off happening in bullions. Immediate delivery bullion lost as much as 0.3% to 1367.53 dollars an ounce and was at 1369.30 dollars. The prices has tumbled 3.6% this week, set for the biggest weekly loss since May after advancing 30% in 2010. The February delivery contract declined by 0.2% raised to $1,369.30 an ounce on the COMEX in New York during the uh, electronic trading session. Okay. Gold assets and exchange traded products fell by 0.13 metric tons to 2,091.65 tons yesterday, declining for a third day, so we have seen some unwinding happening in the spot markets also. The dollar advanced for a fifth day against a basket of six major counterparts. Gold typically moves inversely to the greenback, so that is what we are seeing in the market now, right now. We will see some weakness in gold prices in the short term because we are seeing signs that the US economy is certainly in some sort of improvement that is happening in the economic numbers that is coming in. Cash silver fell as much as 0.7% to $28.8750 per ounce and was at $28.9825. The metal is down 6.3% this week after jumping 83% in 2010. Silver assets in ETPs fell by 25.16 tons to 15,080.07 tons. The data from four providers showed uh, in a Bloomberg survey. So that is also acting as a negative factor because we are seeing a lot of unwinding happening in the spot markets also, especially from the exchange traded products by its side. Today's US non-farm payrolls will be crucial for today's market and probably it will be uh, giving the trend in today's bullion market during the US trading session. So what's the trend shaping up in crude market today? Yeah. Oil rose from the lowest in three weeks as investors, but yesterday's decline made the commodity attractive amid a recovery in economic growth. Crude gained as much as 0.8% in New York, reversing earlier losses before a report today that may show US employers added jobs for a third month. So we are expecting the number of rates to come down. That is acting as a very good supporting factor for crude oil prices as we are expecting the demand to pick up. Economists raised forecast for a US uh, jobs growth this week with the median estimate calling for a gain of 150,000 in December and a drop in unemployment rate to 9.7 percentage. So that is a very significant significant okay. drop. We are so expecting a drop at 0.1 percentage. Okay. So this that will give a trend in the commodities market. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Probably is, uh, the green uh, the greenback reaching the strongest level against the European currency since September 15. Probably this will be acting as a very good uh, resistance level for the prices because okay. any appreciation in the US dollar creates and uh, sell, sell off in commodity prices. So that is what we are uh, see, seeing as being very volatile trading happening in the markets. Oil has dropped 3.2 percentage this week. The US macro data that we have seen in the past two to three week months seems to have surpassed market expectations. So that is creating some sort of bullishness in US dollar. German retail sales month on month basis came in at minus 2.4 percentage as against the expected value of 0.6 percentage. Trade balance, trade balance declined to 11.8 billion as against the 14.5 billion that was expected. So this was a data this that is just coming into the market and probably this will be also acting as a very good uh, uh, supporting factor for uh, uh, especially in case of US dollar appreciation. The spread between the February and April contracts on the IMX widened to $2.52 a barrel yesterday, the largest differentials between the exchange first and third month contracts since September 23rd. The difference was $2.40 uh, today, uh, yesterday in fact. So we have seen the spread also rising, that means people are selling in the uh, current contract, probably they are taking long, long position in the longer term contracts, okay. especially in the three months contracts. Okay, fine. So what are the base measures? What are the times in base measures for today? Yeah. Copper winter sub correction coming in as the rising inventory levels showed that markets might be adequately subtracted for a short term perspective. There was definitely an inventory concern that was that was to the market and we have been seeing some positive signals coming in from the main inventory levels in case of copper. So that is actually putting some pressure on the prices. Concerns that China is set to further tighten monetary policy in the first quarter curb demand and this is also acting as a negative factor for the crude oil uh, copper prices as China is one of the largest consumers of copper. China, the world's largest metal user, boosted interest rates twice in 2010 to tame inflation, running at the fastest pace in more than two years, and a curb in asset bubbles after record gains in lending and property prices. So this is the major concern that China is facing right now, and probably they might be going in for another another round of interest rate hikes. 
Uh, April delivery rental on the Shanghai futures exchange lost as much as 1.9% to 17,618 yuan or $10,661 a ton before ending the morning at 71,230 yuan, but bought exposure lower this week. So we are seeing the continued uh, continuation of selling that is happening in the Chinese market also, especially in the Shanghai uh, ex exchanges. An appreciating investor also noted the appeal for raw material commodities like base metals. Aluminium in London dropped by 0.4% to 2509 a ton after reaching 2524 earlier, the highest price in September 2008. So we are seeing some correction happening from the highs. Sink fell by 0.2% to 2450 a ton while nickel was little changed at 24580 a ton during the early Asian trading hours. So we have just a market correction across the company. Exactly. Yeah. So thanks, Nani, for your quick coverage. Yes. So that's all for now, viewers. We'll be back with more news and updates on the financial markets in the evening section. Till then, this is Joey saying goodbye, Mr. Navani from Diabetes Market Research.